The greatest attack from the Russians of the whole war, it broke the back of the Austro-Hungarians and he was the only man to plan it and of course the offensive would be named after him. We're talking about Alexei Brusilov. He was born in 1853 to the town of Tiflis in the Russian Empire but now Tiflis is the capital of Georgia. His father was a well decorated lieutenant of the Napoleonic Wars. When Alexei was still little his parents died just a few months within each other, more than likely a disease of the time. He and his two brothers were adopted by his aunt and uncle. His uncle was of German descent and Alexei learned German, French and of course some English. He began, he began military school at the age of 14 and he graduated in 1872 with impressive and outstanding marks. He, jo he joined the 15th Chevrolet Dragoons. He would be in the regiment until 1881. He was in the Russo-Turkish War of 1877. In just a few hours he made a name for himself in the sea campaign where he had a whole Turkish garrison surrender without firing a shot. In 1883, he was sent to St. Petersburg Cavalry School where he would be there for 19 years, becoming its director. In the 1900s, he was promoted to Major General. He was married in 1884, but his wife was sick and they had many stillborn children until they only had their only son, Alexei, that was born in 1887. Anna, his wife, died in 1908 and after her death he was again promoted to commander of the 14th Army Corps. He remarried again in 1910 to Kiski and her sister who was in New York was married to an Irish writer and Teofis Charles Johnson. After their trip, Brusilov learnt and became interested in the occult. Alexei and Nadakaska were on holiday in Germany when the war broke out in August of that year and they left home after the Archduke was shot. Lucky for them, if they stayed three days later, they would have been arrested like all the Russian tourists. Back home, Brusilov commanded the 8th Army of the Southwestern Front. With a strong background in cavalry general, he wanted a movement of attack. During the Battle of Galicia, he defeated the Austro-Hungarians and took more than 15,000 prisoners during the Battle of the Russian 48th Infantry who was almost surrounded by the Austro-Hungarians and Brusilov called for the cavalry to relieve them and it was a success. During Austro-Hungary's Carpathian offensive in the winter of early 1915, Brusilov then again defeated the Austro-Hungarians and took 15,000 prisoners. He halted and broke the relief efforts at the siege of Premisul. Even though coming from German and Polish family, he ordered the mass deportation of Germans and Poles and people of German descent as well just three days after the Germans had deported the Russian citizens as well. This was his year, March 17th, 1916. He became commander of the Southwest Front. The high command didn't take Brusilov's plan in the Southwest would work, but the Austrians were fighting the Italians, so they had sharp reserves. He thought that it was the perfect time to break the lines and even knock them out of the war entirely. They, had they were to rehearse at all levels of command. He would rehearse all the preparations but he didn't want them to be seen by the enemy so he ordered all the armies along the front to rehearse in secret and out of enemy view. The plan was to begin on June the 1st but it was delayed to June the 4th and when it did it broke the lines of the Austrian Hungarian lines immediately and Kalindin broke the line at his end and they took the tongue of loose and demolished the Austro-Hungarian lines. With this happening, the other unaffected Austrians retreated to escape encirclement. Over the summer, they had advanced 120 kilometers, marching through Bukovina and Galicia in Ukraine. Austro-Hungarian controls Ukraine, and the Austrians took one million deaths within just the first few months of the offensive. With the Germans coming in to support the Austrians and the Russians' death toll as well, it would put the whole offensive at about two million casualties. But the will of the Austrian army was on the brink of breaking and it was now under the wing of the German Empire and would be subordinate to all German commands. The success to the superiors and generals on the front but Brusilov didn't see it, he saw it as a defeat because he did not have the main goal of defeating the Austro-Hungarian Empire in one push. The namesake offensive was actually called the Loose Breakthrough since Russians um, named their offensive after the region they conquered but after junior officers and infantry support it was changed to the Brusilov Offensive or the Brusilov Breakthrough Brusilov Offensive is for the people in the west Brusilov however didn't like the name change but it stuck especially in the west and Curry Curry of the CEF and other generals like Curry would use Brusilov doctoring of shock troops minimal operation heavy artillery and of course, reserves to shore up the line in case of a massive breakthrough. And this is what made Brusilov very successful. 
Soon the Russian army in 1916 had shortages of everything and the offensive slowed down to a halt and the Bolsheviks were back and the revolution in Petrograd would begin. He saw, he saw without proper leadership and discipline a revolution was going to break out but he still planned for the 1917 spring offensive. The February revolution started and then he was promoted to commander of the whole Russian army by the provisional government. He tried to restore discipline in the army but then the July days happened and of course the October revolution was brewing so it was pretty much too late at that point. With mass desertions and Bolshevik cells in the army, the men laid down their weapons, made truce with the central powers on the front itself, and some even killed their NCOs and just headed home. The army was broken. The Bolsheviks... Brusilov would be then replaced by Kornilov and he was injured in the October revolt, but in the Soviet era he was asked to lead the Red Army, but with failing health, he was retired in 1924 and died in 1926. His funeral was a massive event, almost state funeral like in nature. He was a member of the Tsarists and the Bolsheviks. He saw the rise of the Russian Empire and the fall of it. He was a two-sided man, a man who broke the Austrian lines, but in the end the Bolsheviks broke his army. <coughs> a, fr a friend to the Tsar, but a critic as well. He was the man who broke the Austro-Hungarian lines and saw the Russian victory in the east. And he was there to see the greatest and last victory of Imperial Russia. He was. Bigger than life, larger than life, Alexei Brusilov. Quick note, out of the assessment of all the World War I generals, he's actually marked one of seven. The one, the others being Curry, Mustafa Kamal, um, Alan B, and a few others. But they're mostly Commonwealth and the one Turkish one, and he's marked the first out of all seven of them. So there's Curry, Kamal, Brusilov, and a couple others. Uh, yeah, Falkenheim was on there as well, and Hindenburg and Ludendorff, and I think that's about it. There's one Australian guy that I'm forgetting, but he's marked seven of all. Bigger than life, Alexei Brusilov. Learn something, my dudes.